there are times that you want to test a condition and return different values depending on if the condition is true or not. For example, let's take a look at our orders table. Let's say we want to classify our orders into two categories, active and archive. If the order is placed in the current year, we want to put it in the active category. Otherwise, we want to put it in the archived category. Earlier in the course, you learned how to do this using the union operator. You wrote two select statements, one to get the active orders and another to get the archive orders. And then you combine the results using the union operator. We can achieve the same result using the if function, but with less code. Here's how it works. We call the if function and give it an expression to test. If this expression, if value is too true, this function will return this value. Let's call it the first value. Otherwise, it will return the second value, whatever this value is. It can be a string, it can be null, it can be a number, it can be a date, it can be anything. So let's see this function in action. I'm going to select a couple of columns from the orders table, order ID and order date from the orders table. Now here we want to add another column, and this is where we use the if function. So here we pass a test expression. We want to check to see if the order is placed in the current year. You learned how to do this earlier in the section. So we get the year of order date and compare it with the year of current date time. If this expression evaluates to true, we want to return active. So we pass another argument to the if function that is active. Otherwise, we want to return archive. So we pass another argument, archived. Now, this is getting out of the screen. So let me break this up into multiple lines. That is better. So now we can clearly see the three arguments of the if function. The first argument is a test expression. The second is the value that is returned if the test expression is true. And the third argument is the value that is returned if the test expression is false. Here I missed to add a quote. All right, now let's execute this query. There you go. So as you can see, the first order is placed in the current year, which is 2019. And that is why we have the active label here. Now look at the name of the third column. It is if with an open parenthesis. So let's rename this to something more meaningful like category. And here's the final result. Now here's your exercise for this tutorial. Write a query to produce this result. So here we have four columns, product ID, name, the number of times each product has been ordered, and this frequency column, which is based on what we have in the orders column. If a product has been ordered more than once, in the frequency column we have many times, otherwise we have once. Spend a couple of minutes on this exercise and then come back, continue watching. All right, just like always, we simplify a problem by breaking it down into smaller and easier to solve problems. So first, let's get the product ID and name from the products table, products. Okay, our query is working up to this point, beautiful. Next, we need to add a column to display how many times each product has been ordered. We can get that information by joining the products table with the order items table. So here, we join this with the order items table using the product ID column. Now to get the count, here we call the count aggregate function and rename the column to orders. Now, because we have used an aggregate function here, we need to group by these two columns. So group by product ID and name. Let's execute the query one more time. Beautiful. Now we know how many times each product has been ordered. Finally, let's add the last column. And this is where we're going to use our if function. So if, now what is our test expression? If count of everything is greater than one, we want to return many times. Otherwise, we want to return once. Okay. And now let's give it an alias, frequency. That is the final result. Let's run the query again. There you go.